Hello, and welcome to Headwise, the video cast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel. I'm the founder of Migraine Nation, and I have a history of chronic and daily migraine that began at the age of four. I'm super excited to be here today with a repeat guest and headache medicine specialist, Dr. Fred Cohen. Hello, Dr. Cohen. How are you today? Hi, well, thank you for having me again. Thanks for being here. Dr. Cohen is an assistant professor at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. He is also section chair of the primary care special interest section within the American Headache Society. And he is also a board member of the National Headache Foundation. We're very excited to have him. He always has awesome things and very interesting things to tell us. We have a new and interesting topic today, something we've never discussed before. We plan to discuss the group of medications known as GLP-1 agonists. Many people are being prescribed these medications for type 2 diabetes or for weight loss, and we're going to discuss why and how they might be relevant to our migraine and headache community. Many people that are prescribed them likely also have migraine. So we're just going to chat about them a little bit. Dr. Cohen, for our guests who might not know who you are, why don't you go ahead and tell us just a little bit about yourself? So just like yourself, I have suffered from migraines since as long as I can remember. And it was when I was in residency that I found the headache specialist and that really changed my life around. So my background is in internal medicine and also a fellowship in headache medicine. And I'm now a headache specialist in New York City. I'm very passionate about what I do for the change I have to get the, to give to my patients as well. Okay. So let's talk about what GLP-1 agonists are, what they do, what they're prescribed for, because this is likely the first time we've dedicated an episode of Headwise to discuss a medication that is not for headache or for migraine. These are actually approved to treat type 2 diabetes and weight loss. Many people are taking them for these reasons, but may also have migraine or another type of chronic or severe headache. And that is why we kind of want to chat about it. So let's begin by listing some of the trade names of these medicines so that everyone knows what we're talking about and give the background of, of just what they are. Sure. So common ones that you might have heard of are Trulicity, Victoza, and Saxanda. I don't know why that's hard for me to say. And then the <laughs> one that's getting a lot of press is the generic is semaglutide is uh -huh. the generic name, but that's what Ozempic, Wagovi, Ribelsa, I think that's how you pronounce the one. Uh -huh. And then a more recent one also is Terzeptide, which is Zepbound and, and Mangerno. So what these are, what GLP-1 drugs are, GLP stands for glucon-like peptide. And the way I'll explain it is they were designed for type 2 diabetes. And let's sort of think what diabetes is. This drug deals with how insulin works and how other hormones in that cycle work. So mm -hmm. it the drugs increase insulin secretion. So what does insulin do? Insulin brings down our blood sugar when we eat. Mm -hmm. It suppresses glucagon, which think of glucagon as the opposite of insulin. Insulin brings blood sugar down. Well, let's right. say your body needs more energy, it, it, glucon raises blood sugar up. The other effects that GOP-1s have is they slow gastric emptying, meaning that your stomach, let's say, doesn't empty as quickly. And that helps with post-meal blood sugar spikes and promote a feeling of fullness. And then also it promotes the feeling of appetite suppression. And that is where they think the weight loss effects come from. We previously recorded an episode with Dr. Amelia Scott Barrett about the relationship between migraine and obesity or migraine and, and BMI. Let's back up a bit and discuss this relationship because while migraine and chronic headache patients come in all shapes and sizes, there is data to show that obesity can make a person's migraine disease worse. So can we just discuss that really quick? So it's various population studies, studies that are aiming to see, okay, how much does migraine affect people in the country, their burden, their impact, et cetera. Those studies have found that obesity was a common risk factor for, to progress from episodic migraine. So having eight or less monthly migraine days to progress into chronic migraine, which is more mm -hmm. than that. So it was found obesity is a risk factor for that. And the reason behind that is obesity 
can cause several things in sort of the cycles in our body. And one of those is it can interact with inflammation. Mm -hmm. Obesity is associated with being in a chronic state of inflammation. And the reason why is adipose tissue, which is the fancy way to say fat cells, they release these chemical markers like cytokines, as well as C-reactive protein. And these are the things that cause inflammation. Mm -hmm. And headaches, not just migraine. Well, migraine, like I said, that's been linked. What are headaches and migraine on a basic level? If you want to really just say one sentence, they're conditions of neuroinflammation. Right. So when, when I speak to patients, you know, because I get asked all the time, why am I having migraine? There's several reasons. There's no usually one thing. It's things that deal with inflammation. I talk about sleep. I talk about diet. I talk about their stressors. They're all related. Obesity is one of them. It's not the only cause. I want to make that clear that migraine is not a problem from obesity. Mm -hmm. It's just that obesity can compound on it. So what I tell my patients is about having a BMI of this much can lead to worsening of your headache, but it's not the root cause. We have had people before who they say to us that, oh, I went to my headache specialist because I had migraine and I, I had this feeling that they were telling me it's my fault because I'm overweight. And that's really not at all what we're saying here. We have to build rock walls against our migraine and we need a lot of rocks or a lot of tools to keep the migraine away. And one of the rocks can be our, our controlling weight. So this is just one of the, the things. Migraine is not always, oh, it's only prescription medication for the migraine. Right. Again, it's evaluating other lifestyle components as well. Okay. So my question is, because I think this is something, if you kind of flip this question around, this is something people always want to hear. Do we know, or has it been found that a person's migraine burden can actually decrease if they lose weight, if they are overweight? So while there hasn't been, I would say a direct test that, but we've seen again, through these population studies that with with reducing obesity, there is there is improvement in migraine burden. I can't say, oh, specifically that, but in patients who, in addition to proper migraine treatment, I'm not just saying losing weight alone, mm-hmm. but in addition to adequate migraine therapy and losing weight, yes, there's been a decrease in severity. I'll say just this week, I had a patient who I have various migraine regimen for. I'm, I'm giving her prescription meds or her migraine, but she also got she got bariatric surgery, not a GLP-1, and she's done fantastic weight loss, and she has, a, she has had a great improvement in her mm-hmm. migraine burden. Now, I'm mm-hmm. not saying all that was losing weight. No, I do think it was a portion of it. Mm-hmm. Now, this is probably a good time to point out that people do not prescribe these types of medicines for head pain or for the purpose of improving headache or migraine, do they? No. The, the, again, these... GOP ones are not FDA approved for treating migraine. Mm-hmm. Again, I bring it up in the sense that that oh, this is a component, and of course, obesity can lead to other serious health complications such as coronary artery disease, risk of stroke. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just it's more of an overall health picture. Okay, there was something that I think we wanted to address, and it's another type of of headache, severe headache actually, that is much or not as well known as migraine at all, it's called IIH or idiopathic intracranial hypertension. It's known to be more prevalent in people who are overweight. It's actually underdiagnosed. Often it's misdiagnosed as migraine. And I'm curious to know if this is something that could be helped if people lose weight or maybe if the prevalence of, of IAH decreases when people go on certain medications like this, et cetera. So I guess I'll quickly explain what IAH is. IAH, mm-hmm. think of our brains as fish in a fishbowl. And the water mm-hmm. is something called cerebral spinal fluid. So our brain is surrounded by fluid. Mm-hmm. And we have systems in our body that keep that pressure at a certain area. What happens when the pressure gets too high? That's what idiopathic intracranial hypertension is. The pressure is too high. And headache is a very common symptom of that, typically a positional headache. And the issue with that is if it goes untreated, it could lead to several complications, including permanent vision loss. So anyone that comes into my clinic for a new visit, I always do a few tests to make sure we're not dealing with this. Mm -hmm. There are three major risk factors to developing IAH. And we're not exactly sure why these are, but again, population studies show these are things that can lead to that. And it's 
It's commonly seen in women with of childbearing age who also have obesity. And it can happen outside. I've diagnosed people underweight with IH. It's just that's a common population. And we think that obesity interferes with our bodies, our brain's ability to regulate that pressure. So to go to your question, can GOP-1 agonists be used to treat that? That is, again, GOP-1 agonists are used to treat the weight issue. And then the thought, because this is improving it, the thought would be if obesity comes down, then the prevalence mm -hmm. of IH someone would come down. That's not been proven, mm -hmm. but in theory, that sounds like it should have an impact on that. Here is where things get really interesting because most people probably don't know this, but it's popping up all over the internet and I, I think people are going to be noticing it. And so I want to make sure we address it. There is a small, slight indication in the scientific literature that GLP-1 agonists could be beneficial in pain and central sensitization pathways like migraine, independent of weight loss. In other words, perhaps the this is effective in pain pathways. And you and I have chatted about this a little bit. It's only a little bit of literature, but let's address it because people are probably gonna start seeing it popping up on the internet, et cetera. So there's been a lot of interesting studies and results coming from the GOP-1 classes. Mm -hmm. Again, it's designed for type two diabetes, then we found to be effective in weight loss, and then there are these other areas sort of in medicine popping up that it's being effective. And one of the areas that popped up was using it actually in substance abuse, that it was found to sort of improve with that, specifically opioid abuse. Mm -hmm. the, the issue when you take a lot of opioid medication is it leads to your body being in this chronic hypersensitized situation of pain. Mm -hmm. And they found with those patients that that comes down. And that's what led to further studies that show that, G, that the use of drugs on the GOP-1 receptor can deal with receptors that we see involved with the central sensitization phenomenon with chronic migraine. Now, this hasn't mm -hmm. been proven. This is more of an exploration of a, a novel theory. But so far, data shows that, oh, that's actually an interesting side effect. Now, will they make uh, a GOP-1-like drug, like a newer generation that hones in on that more? That's possible. I'm not a, I don't design drugs. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not the expertise. <laughs> but again, this is how medicines get further develop that it's oh so side effects are not always a bad side effect it's like oh that's right. a neat how can we enhance that more so i it wouldn't stun me in five ten years that a newer generation of drug targets that side effect and the story i always like to say is remember off topic but remember viagra it wasn't designed for erectile dysfunction it was designed right. for a, a lung issue mm -hmm. and then turns out oh it actually helps with this issue and that happens in drug discovery so right. maybe we'll see down the road that a newer generation of this class of drug is actually able to treat symptoms of chronic pain. One of the questions that'll probably come up, people watching this, is do where do they go to get this? Do headache specialists prescribe this at this time? Is it mostly primary care doctors that prescribe it? So originally it was endocrinologists that would prescribe it, and now we're seeing more primary care doctors do it. Some Headache specialists do this, again, like with any drug, it comes to how comfortable and knowledgeable the prescriber is. For instance, if you have a medical license, I could prescribe whatever, but I'm only going to prescribe things that I'm comfortable prescribing. You might find it, it's not within a headache toolbox. So right. your headache specialist might not be familiar enough to prescribe it. But with that said, your primary care might be, or if this is something you like to explore, they might be able to refer you to someone, such as an endocrinologist, who is comfortable and knowledgeable to explain and prescribe it to you. And as with any medications, I can sort of see where this one might have possibility for abuse. What sorts of abuse possibilities do you see with this medication? Of course, any drug, anything could be abuse. So people think, oh, weight loss, suppression diet is good. It's useful, but it's not always the solution or answer. Underweight is actually more dangerous than overweight. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, this goes to when I used to be a primary care provider and patient, like, why can't I take more insulin? I want my blood sugar lower. And I say, well, high blood sugar hurts you slowly. Low blood sugar could be lethal. It could kill you. Mm -hmm. And as with this, if this isn't a kind of drug like, yeah, it's like a multivitamin. Everyone takes GOP ones. No, there is a time and a place for it. And it should only be given with a discussion with your prescriber. They also agreed to meet this. Otherwise, yes, again, 
It could, being underweight leads to a whole plethora of medical issues. It could have gastrointestinal side effects. Like I know there could be issues with those who have history of certain thyroid cancers. Like there are reasons Mm -hmm. not to give this. Is there anything else you'd like to add on this topic of GLP-1 agonists and and people possibly taking it who who happen to have migraine or other headache disorders? I would like to end it on sort of, again, this is the approach of treating migraine and headaches. And this is why I love what I do is it's not just a one sort of, if you're able to take one pill and everything's great, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, everyone's different. Eddie, every headache is unique because I get asked questions about, oh, I took this migraine diet my friend did, but it didn't help me. Or I took this pill, it didn't help me. Everyone's headache is unique. And this is why it's a discussion with you and your headache provider. And it may be that I'm not saying, oh, treating your obesity is going to treat your headache. No, but the, it, it may benefit your headache condition by treating the obesity. I'm not coming out saying, oh, this is the one true treatment to do it. No, but if you suffer from frequent headaches as well as from obesity, it's definitely mm-hmm. worthy of a discussion with your provider. That's great. That's a great way to put it. And thank you so much for being here today and discussing this interesting new topic that we've never really discussed. And thank you everyone for joining us. Please join us for our next episode of Headwise. Have a great day.